Today we are talking about how to replace a gas key on your bolt carrier. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to replace the gas key on your bolt carrier. Now, this actually turned out to be a great opportunity. A student of mine named Yuli uh, contacted me and he said, hey, I'm having some issues with a rifle. Now it's a good quality rifle from a very reputable manufacturer. And he basically said, he's like, hey, I think there's not enough gas. It's short stroking, it's not locking the bolt back to the rear, it's not cycling, something is wrong. Uh, so he kind of walked me through what troubleshooting steps he had already taken and he was on the right path. You know, he was definitely doing the right things as far as identifying, was it ammunition related, was it, um, you know, gun related in certain parts of the gun. So one of the things I had him check was I said, you know, if you check the gas block and if you've checked everything else and that looks good, I bet you have an obstruction in your gas key, such as a primer or something like that. So sure enough, he checked and he was able to find this little piece right here, which is a chewed up primer that was in his gas key. Now, is it common? Well, I've seen it before a few times, and if you're able to get it out completely and clear it out, you probably don't need to replace the gas key. However, if there's any doubt that there's a piece of debris in there, or if you can't get the primer out, then you need to replace the gas key because we don't want to damage the gas tube, and obviously we don't want to have cycling issues with an obstruction in there. So in this case, he was able to get out most of the primer, but I figured you know this would be a great primer, so to speak, to make a video talking about gas key replacement on a carrier. So again, this is a good quality bolt carrier. We're gonna talk about all sorts of things related to the gas key and the hardware and then staking and securing, but sometimes this happens. So if your gun is short stroking, you think the gas block is clear, you think the tube is clear, check the gas key for an obstruction. Make sure you don't see a primer or something like that shoved down in there. Now, why do you get popped primers? Well, on certain guns, it could be because of a chamber issue uh, or it could just be a fluke. Sometimes there's just bad ammo out there. And when we were seeing a lot of ammunition being pushed through the production cycles really, really quick during the ammo craze of a few years ago, quality you know, was varying from ammo lot to ammo lot and we were seeing different stuff. So sometimes it happens. Uh, don't be afraid to have a gunsmith though check out your rifle if you're getting popped primers all the time, especially if you're shooting five, five, six rounds your chamber might not be a true 556 five, chamber. It could be a 223 chamber that's just marked incorrectly or improperly reamed. So don't be afraid to have that checked out as well. So let's talk about the carrier. Uh, the carrier itself is kind of the heart of the gun, so to speak. It definitely is a big part of the operating system. It takes in gas, it unlocks, it feeds. I mean, it, it, it's so important to have a good quality bolt carrier in your rifle because if you have a crappy one or if you have issues, it can turn your rifle into a single shot. Now, one component of a DI system is the gas key. And this is, uh, come, you know, gas comes in through the tube, it's fed in through here, goes down into the carrier, pushes the bolt forward, helps with, um, or unlocks the gun, excuse me, and then we are continuing with the cycle. Now, if this gets damaged, I've seen them before where people take this out for cleaning and they drop it and then the key gets bent, that happens too sometimes, or even the key just gets damaged on the front, that happens. So sometimes we'll need to replace the key for various reasons. Now you can see, again, this is a good quality key. You can see it's chrome lined inside the key. Some of the cheaper keys on the market are not chrome lined. And uh, they're also uh, made out of different processes that are, you know, are just not as good as other processes. You know, a good quality cast Carrier key is a, a good investment. So if you're gonna replace it, make sure you, inv you know, invest in a good quality part that's a quality part that is gonna last you how it should. I've seen keys break uh, just from use or crappy manufacturing. I've seen improperly uh, tightened keys so they'll be loose. Even though it's staked, the key can actually be loose and that'll cause a, a leak here so it won't be sealed properly because this does need to be sealed to the carrier to ensure that it's working properly. So, you know, not just a, uh, tightening and hoping for the best, but we also wanna make sure we're tightening, sealing, and then properly staking. So we're gonna go through all that right now. So let's first remove this one. And you can see that these are just hex keys right on the top. So use the appropriate size hex key. Now mil spec fasteners will use 1 8 inch. However, there's a lot of carriers on the market that are using more commercially available fasteners and those use a 9 64th. As long as you're using a good quality screw, it doesn't matter what the fastener size is so long as it's a good quality screw. Now sometimes the staking on this 
You know, it's not quite as deep as maybe I would prefer out of my shop, but uh, sometimes you will have to get a file or a punch to displace some of that staking if you can't. But we will try to just loosen up the fasteners here as shown. And we can just keep loosening. remove the key. Now again if the staking is, is pretty deep, uh, in this case it wasn't too deep, but you might have to take a rotary tool or a file to displace that if it's really locking it in there. Now another sign of a good carrier is a carrier that is finished underneath where the key was. Believe it or not, I take some of these keys off and it's just bare metal on some of these. So basically what those manufacturers are doing is they're attaching the key and then they're sending it off to parkerization. So uh, again, it's just a step that some manufacturers cut just to try to save a buck. And in my opinion, it just makes for lesser quality part. Now you can see the anatomy here. You can see that the gas comes down through the key and it comes out this hole right there. And that matches up with the port on the carrier. Now mill spec does call for this surface to be sealed. A lot of manufacturers don't do that. Even quality manufacturers are not sealing the surface between the key and the carrier. Uh, you're supposed to use Permatex gasket compound. It's good stuff, works really well, uh, but a lot of manufacturers don't do it. So we're just gonna clean this up. Don't be afraid to take a little cleaning agent or degreaser and really make sure that this surface is nice and clean and we're gonna make sure that there is no obstructions down the port. I don't see any, it looks pretty good. If there was, you can take a swab or a pick or something and do whatever you need to do. Now, you can see the new key is gonna go in place and we're gonna secure it. Now don't reuse these screws, especially if you had to file them or whatever. Uh, you can buy new screws or you can you know, contact a good armor or gunsmith. Now, like what I talked about before, you know, these screws are 1 8 and this carrier, these are 9 64 And if you'll notice, there's really small initials on here too. That indicates that these are imported. These are not domestically made. I like to use good United States sourced grade eight or better quality screws. And the screw size is 832 by a quarter inch socket head cap screw. And the screws that I personally prefer to use are these aircraft grade Torx head screws. So they're a better than a grade eight alloy. Uh, they're black socket head cap screw, but they use a Torx T25 bit versus a Allen or a hex bit. And I just find that I can apply this with a you know, better control. I can apply the proper amount of torque. I can remove them easier. These are just really good quality screws. And this is personally what I use in my shop. I buy them by the, by the batch and this is what I use. And you'll you know, probably have you last a lifetime. So that's what we're gonna use. Now we're gonna clean this. And what I use to seal my keys is I use this high temperature Permatex gel. Now this does make removal a little bit more difficult. And there's one uh, major manufacturer, bolt carrier manufacturer on the market that they seal their screws, they Loctite their screws in or thread lock their screws in with the same stuff and they don't do any staking at all. And there's some controversy you know, over that, over, over whether that's the appropriate procedure or not, but you know, I like to, to seal in the carrier. And again, we're just gonna spread the gel around. And what's nice with the gel, because it doesn't run, is we can make sure that we're not blocking the port. We can put the gel all around, clean up the excess and make sure that we're not blocking the port in any way. And again, that's just gonna go like so, and we can clean off the excess here. Place the key in position. And with our new screws, and if you wanna double check to make sure that you're not blocking 
the port on the key and the port on the carrier, I'm all right with double checking. I'm gonna put that in position, make sure that the holes are in alignment, and then we can install our fastener. I'm just gonna snug it down. Good. Now I can clean up the excess gel. Now another thing to note with the sealant is we didn't see a lot of sealant kind of, you know, spooge out in excess, and that's good. You don't want to use too much. A thin coating of that gel is all you need just to make a nice seal. And again, we're using that thin coating so we don't block the port. It's very, very important. If you see a bunch starting to come out that it looks like, hey, I might have put too much on, take those screws off, double check. All we need is a very light, thin coating. Now we're ready to torque these screws, and it is important to note that we don't wanna over torque these screws. Number one, we could break the screws, which would be very, very bad. And number two, if we over tighten these screws, it could make difficult uh, removal in the future if we ever had to repair or replace the key. So I'm just gonna snug down, and then I'm going to get my inch pound torque driver. Now the military manual calls for 35 to 40 inch pounds for these screws, and that's for the, the hex head screws here. Now because I'm using these screws with a high quality alloy steel, good quality Torx head, I personally torque these to right about 45 or 50 inch pounds. Uh, again, you don't wanna over torque these, but I got my inch pound torque driver set to 45 inch pounds. I'm gonna secure it, and I'm going to tighten. Double check. And our screws are properly torqued. Now we're ready to stake the screws in place. Now that we have the screws torqued down, it's time to talk about staking. And what staking is, is displacing some of the material from the gas key into the side or the top of the screw. Now, the small socket head cap screws that we use, you can see on the side that there is some knurling. Now this knurling works out really good in this circumstance because that displaced material can wedge into that knurling kind of helping to lock the screw in place. Now despite what the internet says, staking doesn't have anything to do with sealing the key on the carrier. The staking is to prevent the screws from loosening up. I like to use a staking tool that does a great job, and that's these Moax tools from Michigan's. Uh, these are kind of the industry standard for staking tools. So how this works is we put the tool in alignment with the key, and then you can kind of look down and line it up, but we're basically gonna then snug down the tool so that when we tighten these screws, they actually have a point. And when we tighten that point, it's actually gonna displace and drive that material into the screw. So I'm just making sure everything's lined up. I'm a firm believer in double and triple checking to make sure everything is lined up. And if you want, a great method to do is you can align a fastener or a hex key wrench or whatever uh, through these holes to make sure it's in alignment with the key. So now that that is lined up, we can tighten all four of the screws until they stop against the tool. Repeat for the other side. Once all of them are tightened down, we can loosen. And then remove the tool. And you can see we have nice staking that displaces some metal into the side and top of these screws that's really gonna lock those screws down holding them in place. Now some companies do 
in my opinion, just a poor, poor job of staking. Uh, there are other methods where it'll look like they just use a chisel or a press or something, but I like a, a staking job like the, what I'm showing you here. Now, if we compare that to this other carrier that I had, uh, you can see here that they tried to do some side displacing staking. They did a little bit of a, a peen or a punch on the top as well. So while this may you know, hold the fastener, I just prefer you know, a good quality staking job. And that's one of the things to look for with a quality rifle is you'll look at the staking and see, you know, did that manufacturer cut corners? Did they do a good job staking? That's just one of those little things that separate good quality rifles from some of the bargain rifles out there. So that is carrier replacement, kind of 101. We removed the old carrier, we cleaned it, we sealed it, we properly torqued down some good quality screws and we replaced it with a good quality carrier and then we did a nice staking job. And now this is ready to be lubed up and put back in the rifle and hopefully give a great service life to Yuli. So again, I thank Yuli for sending his carrier uh, to us and kind of making a video on a learning point that we can all learn from, a good teachable moment for everybody here. So I do appreciate that. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave a comment in the section below. We also have a monthly QA series. We'd love to take your questions. That's kind of our mail call segment. And plus we give away prizes to one lucky question asker every month. So you can send us an email, the QA at gunsandtactics.com, put the address down below or you can just leave comments on our social media platform and we would love to hear back from you. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day.